Hi everyone, I'm Kim from the Magnet Marketing Team, here to share with you about Magnet Outrider. There are four parts to this video. Licensing Manager, Outrider for Windows, Outrider for Mac, and Outrider Beta for Android. Outrider is a triaging tool to help examiners quickly find CSAM and other actionable artifacts while in the field or back in the laboratory. With the vast amounts of data needing to be analyzed, Magnet Outrider helps you get lightning fast previews of Windows and Mac machines, as well as external drives and Android devices. When you downloaded Outrider, you received a PDF of the Magnet Outrider user guide. This comprehensive guide helps you to use the software, but also explains a few things that are important to note. One such item is understanding system changes. This section gives explanation for the use of this triaging tool for both Windows and Mac. Let's walk through the steps of getting Outrider licensed for your own device. After you make the request to purchase, Magnet Sales will start the process and you'll receive an email similar to this one. If you have a USB device, ensure that it is formatted to XFAT. We suggest you use a portable SSD such as a Samsung T7. To download Magnet Outrider, you can download the link straight from the email, but that link will expire after seven days. You can always go to the customer portal to download it there. So let's download Outrider. After it downloads, the zip file will be located in your downloads folder or wherever your browser has saved it. We can extract all of those files and put them someplace that we would like for them to go. So I'm gonna put them on a folder on my desktop. Now we need to register the device we'll be using. Go into the folder where you've downloaded your Outrider files and you've extracted them. Go into the Windows folder. Within the Windows folder, we'll select Registration Tool. Double click the Outrider Registration.exe. Step one says you should have received an email containing some information that we're going to need. You'll need the order ID or order IDs, the number of devices assigned to each order, and also the physical devices that you intend to license with Magnet Outrider before you continue. You'll need to check the box saying that you have those things and then click next. We'll enter the order ID we received in the email, the number of devices assigned as one, my agency name, and then you'll need to enter your email address for the new license code. Now it says to follow the steps to register the device that you want to use with Magnet Outrider. The registration tool will take a look at the drives available and if you need to put a new drive in, you can always click the refresh list. You'll need to select the devices that you're going to use with Outrider. Just simply click a plus sign on the left and notice on the right, the status will be noted as added. We'll click next. Step four is to send your registration information. Email us your registration information by clicking the send registration info and save a copy of that registration information for your own records by clicking the copy table. When you're finished, click done. Your device registration is complete and your new license will be sent to the email that you provided in step two. Be sure that you saved all of your information and the data for your own records before you close out of the tool. After you've licensed your device, you can go into the Outrider folder and launch Outrider. You'll be greeted with a couple of checkboxes that you can select if you would like to participate in these and agree with the EULA and then click Next. 24 to 48 hours after registering your devices, you can then activate the full license. If Outrider is unlicensed, you will have a yellow banner across the top. To activate the full license 48 hours after you sent the registration form, you can go to Manage, Manage Licensing, and Magnet License Manager. Remember also, you can always go to Manage and check for updates to make sure that you're using the most recent version of the software. I already have Outrider open and have launched it from an external drive attached to my local machine. I'm approaching my computer as one we found on scene. I want to scan this computer that's up and running and has external drives attached and see what results we get. You may initially get a pop-up that asks you to agree to the end user license agreement and also asks if you would like to opt into providing diagnostic data back to Magnet. I already have Outrider open and have launched it from an external drive attached to my local machine. I'm approaching my computer as one that I found on scene and I want to scan this computer that's up and running and has external drives attached to it and see what results we get. For step one, we'll need to enter a case number. For step two, I've selected a template and we will talk about those in just a moment. Before we get into options, I wanna go ahead and get our scan started and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the settings. For selecting evidence, we could click select all or we could attach a drive that's not connected right now and click refresh all in order to see that drive. 
I'm going to select a few drives and they're going to total about seven and a half terabytes of data. As a side note, I could run Outrider on my forensic machine and scan the suspect drives that I've attached. It's an easy way to look through external drives to see if they may be an evidence item that you wish to examine further. I'm going to start the scan, and when I do, I get a message that pops up for consideration about encrypted drives and timestamps, and I'll tell you about both of those after the scan. So after a minute and 28 seconds, you can see that my scan is finished, and I have various categories on the left that I can click through. I can click on the critical hits or I can click on the individual categories. I have anti-forensic files that I've found, cloud files, collect files, cryptocurrency files, dark web files, encryption files, peer-to-peer -peer files, VM files, VPN files. I have some keyword hits. I have CSAM detection. These are some false hits that we've loaded in just so that we would have some samples and any errors or warnings. We can also click open report and that will open the folder that has been generated with our results. From there, you can click on HTML file and look through those individually and then be able to copy off that HTML file as a report or share it with whomever you may need to. Let's go back to Outrider and take a look at our settings. If we go to manage in the top right corner, we can go to manage templates. Templates are helpful if you're working different types of cases and would need to scan devices with different options. For example, you may want to have different types of keywords in your templates for CSAM cases versus homicide cases. So we can create a new template. You can name the template something indicative of the type of case or scan that you're doing. And the dropdown helps you narrow down the scan options depending on the type of device you are scanning. So by default, we'll leave all the operating systems detected. It can include user data without a keyword match, and that's for Android, which we'll look at later in this video. We can search files using a keyword list and then specify if it has to match the whole word. We can click Add Keyword List to browse to a text file containing your search terms. You can search files using a regular expression keyword list. If you aren't familiar with regular expressions, they can assist with pattern matching where exact data isn't known. For example, regular expressions can look for characters that may represent phone numbers when the actual phone number isn't known. The regular expressions for which you would like to search must be in a text file with each expression on a separate line. We can locate apps of interest, which comes from a pre-built list within Outrider. Let's take a look at the user guide to see the supported applications section. By checking this in our template, we'll be searching for application executables for apps such as dark web apps, encrypted apps, VPNs, etc. Locating files of interest for optional collection purposes. This will look for files such as cryptocurrency wallet files, cloud storage decryption keys, etc. There's a hyperlink in the user guide for both of those two lists of apps to see the complete list. By selecting scan the first tier of file names within zip files, file names are scanned, not the content of the files within the zip. It'll look for keywords or regular expression hits, even if the zip file is password protected. For search priority paths, that is required to be checked if you're looking at Safari history. Looking at the user guide, we can see what's going to be searched and it will scan for each user. An XML file received from NECMEC or the National Center for Messing and Exploited Children can be ingested so that the contents such as usernames, IP addresses, etc. can be searched using Outrider. The next option allows Outrider to search browser history for URLs and keywords that you have in your keyword list. For a live system, we can collect artifacts listed in the user guide such as USB device history, recently logged on users, extended drive information, mapped network drives, user accounts, operating system details, installed applications, and there are several others listed in the guide. Another potentially important one is active network connections. We can collect RAM from Windows machines. And we can scan the drives for encryption. This is associated with the pop-up that I mentioned when we first started the scan. When Outrider launches, it loads the drives available for scanning and looks around Windows computers for attached drives with BitLocker encryption. We can specify here to optionally include those details in your report. And by the way, if an encrypted or BitLocker password locked drive is located, you'll be able to see which drive it is. Outrider will also alert you when it's detected and then you can choose to scan or to close Outrider. Just to note that if encryption is not detected, it does not guarantee that there are no encrypted drives. There may be encrypted drives that Outrider was not able to detect. 
A word of caution about finding encrypted drives. Ensure that you have the password or decryption key before shutting down the machine or alternately copy the files that are in a decrypted state at that point to avoid not having access to those files later. For Windows machines, a screenshot of the desktop is saved to the report folder. And you may want to ensure you minimize just the Outrider application before the screenshot of the desktop is taken. The next option allows us to search the names of all applications running on the device. Next, if the live system is connected to a wired or wireless network, the network can be scanned to locate devices and determine their IP address, MAC address, and other valuable information. And lastly, we can obtain the IP address of the device Outrider is running on, and that's also available for both Windows and Mac OS. For our law enforcement customers and usable on both Windows and Mac, there is CSAM detection from the CRC or Child Rescue Coalition. The scan can detect known CSAM even if no keyword hits were found in the file names. This scan uses hashes from U.S. and Canadian law enforcement. And the option for scanning all file types, no matter their extension, using the CRC CSAM technology is there as well. For reports, we can include thumbnails of CSAM hits and also save the file paths that are detected in the scan. This will be saved in the report folder in a file named pathlist.txt. A bit of warning though, this will increase your scan time and the text file where the paths are saved may get very large. For managed templates, you can edit a template, duplicate a template, or delete them. If we go back to manage, go to manage settings, we can select to change the theme and Outrider will change to dark mode. We can also select to display CSAM thumbnail images and display parsed timestamps in UTC. And while we're talking about timestamps, this was the second part of the pop-up that we received when the scan started. If the suspect system can update the last accessed file timestamps, some of them may be modified during the scan. It's important for you as the examiner to know of the possibility, particularly if you choose to do a full forensic examination with a tool like Axiom. You may have dates and times on your suspect system that coincide with the time the system was in your custody. Ensure you document thoroughly. You can also specify to send diagnostic information from here. As for the report settings, we can browse to find a logo you'd like to include in the report header. We can also change the location of where the report will be saved. From our Manage menu, we have our licensing options. We can also check for Outrider updates and it's best practice for you to do this ahead of time on one of your machines instead of doing it on a suspect computer. When you downloaded Outrider, you received a PDF of the Magnet Outrider User Guide. This comprehensive guide helps you to use the software and also gives you specific instructions on how to install Outrider. We have to give full disk access to Terminal and run the Magnet Outrider admin script. To do this, you'll go to System Preferences, Privacy and Security, and Privacy. Select Full Disk Access and click the Lock button. Enter the admin credentials if necessary. Then do one of the following. If Terminal is on the list of allowed apps, select the checkbox next to the application. If Terminal is not in the list of allowed apps, click the Add button and navigate to Applications, Utilities, and Terminal, then click Open. Remember that if you need to return the device to its previous state, remove full disk access from Terminal after you've scanned the device. Now we need to run the Magnet Outrider admin script. In the Installation folder, double-click Start Outrider from macOS admin command. In the terminal window, enter the root password and press enter. Keep the terminal window open and now you can use Magnet Outrider. Be sure to close the terminal window when you're done using Magnet Outrider. Now we can use Magnet Outrider. We enter a case number and before we get into some of the options, we're going to go ahead and use the default template and keep the options for the local drive, the local computer, and an external drive that's connected. When it's complete, I can click Open Report to view the HTML report that's been generated. Or I can click through the navigation on the left to see the artifacts that correspond. Or click Open Report and open the computer.html that was generated in the destination folder. We can scroll through and see the artifacts that may be of interest to us, some CSAM detection that we have as false hits so that we would have something to show. Going back to the scan setup, let's take a look at our settings. We can click on Edit Template, and for 
the view scan options, we could select all operating systems or we could narrow it down to just the options that are available to us for Mac OS. Various templates are helpful if you're using different settings depending on the case you're working. We can search files using a keyword list and select if you want it to match on the entire word. We can select if we would like to use regular expressions in a keyword list as well. We can locate apps of interest, which comes from a pre-built list within Outrider. You can take a look at those specific apps within the user guide. If you select locating files of interest for optional collection purposes, this will look for files such as cryptocurrency wallet files, cloud storage decryption keys, etc. You can select to scan the first tier of file names within zip files. File names are scanned, not the content within the zip file. It will look for keywords or regular expression hits, even if the zip file is password protected. Searching priority paths is required to be checked if you're looking at Safari history. We can also use the XML file received from NECMEC or the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children so that the contents within that file, such as usernames, IP addresses, can be searched using Outrider. We can select for Outrider to search browser history for URLs and keywords that you have in your keyword list. And for a live system, we can search for running processes and obtain IP address. For CSAM detection, we can use the Child Rescue Coalition CSAM detection and also select to scan all file types, regardless of the file extension. Reporting options, we can save thumbnails of CSAM hits to the report. We can save all the file paths that are detected in the scan, and they'll be saved in the report folder in a file named pathlist.txt. A bit of a warning, this will increase your scan time and the text file the paths are saved in may get very large. Then we select Save Template. Let's take a look at our settings. We can then go back to Manage Templates, where we can edit, duplicate, or delete any templates that we've generated. If we go to Settings, we can select Change Theme, and that will put Outrider in dark mode. For the scan settings, we can select to display the CSAM thumbnail images. This is during the scan. Display the parsed timestamps in UTC. Send diagnostic information. For the reports, we can select a logo to add to the header, and we can also specify the location where we want these report files to be stored. From here, we can also manage our license and we can check for Outrider updates. Remember, you should always check for Outrider updates using one of your machines, not on a suspect drive. Triaging Androids in Outrider Beta can help examiners get to evidence quickly without using a custom agent APK as with most tools. We can easily scan Android 12 and higher devices in the field or in the laboratory. After launching Outrider with a connected Android device, we can select Refresh All if you don't see the device listed. The device information will display with its serial number, so we'll select it. After entering a case number, we can also edit the template. We can see the options that are available in Android only. One of them is to include user data, even if it doesn't have a keyword match within that data. We can search files using a keyword list that we provide, or we could also use a regular expression keyword list. We can locate files of interest for optional collection purposes, such as with cryptocurrency. And we can also locate files using a NECMEC tip, which we would ingest a NECMEC file that comes in an XML format. When complete, we'll click Start Scan. And as Outrider searches, we can start clicking in the left navigation so that we can go ahead and start taking a look at some of our artifacts. You can see that my mobile artifacts are grouped together. And then you can also see these located applications. Notice how when I click on these categories, on the right, I have tables with columns that I can search and also some configuration for my columns. If, for example, I wanted to search through my third-party apps, perhaps for Snapchat, if I had multiple devices with Snapchat artifacts, I could click in the device column and filter further. I can click on Open Report down in the bottom right, and this report will be displayed in a browser. It's also saved to the external drive that you used and that you ran Outrider from. As with other devices we've scanned in Outrider, we can take a look at the HTML report that's generated. The account data that we looked at are recent apps, call logs, contacts, SMS, MMS, external files. This is all included in the HTML report 
in the location you've specified within Outrider. 